Hello, Michael here with another Render Man tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to render lava as requested by a subscriber on YouTube. So the first thing we're going to do is if you want to follow along with me, I'm just going to create a plane here and I'm going to set the scale to be 20 by 20. And I'm also going to create a sphere. The sphere is just for scale. So, um, so we can sort of see sort of how big everything looks uh, with a reference. Uh, I'm also going to chuck a uh, light in and this isn't going to be super important but um, just while we're working on it it's going to be useful and um, probably at a value of um, intensity of one is going to be fine I think just based on its size. Alright so let's get started by assigning a Pixar surface shader to our plane and then we'll jump into the hypershade editor and we'll just map out that new shader and we're going to call this Pixar Lava. So um, here's the uh, here's one that I prepared earlier and basically I'm just going to quickly go through what we're going to be aiming at here. So the main thing is obviously this sort of intense glow from the yellow areas and then essentially sort of how lava works is um, as it gets nearer to the surface it cools down and then it, it turns into rock rather than being molten rock. Uh, which you can see in these areas here, it's sort of ashen. Um, lava can look a whole bunch of different ways. Sometimes it can look a lot more like mud and sometimes it can look just more like the red stuff, um, like your bolognese. Um, but uh, this is the sort of, this is what I had in mind when I thought lava. So if this is sort of what you are wanting to go for, you'll get something similar to this. Uh, but even using these techniques, you could go for some sort of different sort of patterns as well. Okay, so we're going to be working procedurally here. So the first thing we're going to do is hit tab and type in Pixar Fractal. And we're going to Pixar Fractal node. And I've like already done this, obviously, when I practiced it earlier. So um, I'm just going to use the same settings that I used then. Um, you can adjust these settings once you're happy with what you've got, uh, once you're sort of familiar with the process. But uh, just for the sake of time mainly, I'm just going to... Um, enter in the settings that I've already used previously. Um, and if you want to know more about Pixar Fractal Node, um, I, use, I think I've got a tutorial for that already and if I don't maybe I should do one. Um, but uh, it's it's pretty easy to see what everything does once you start connecting that up to the uh, diffuse channel of your lava and then rendering it. So let's do that now and see what's happening. I'm just going to turn off the grid. Okay so as you can see we get sort of a cloudy effect um, from the Pixar Fractal that's basically what we're looking for. We want to have um, light areas and dark areas. The lighter areas are going to end up being the um, the highlighter yellow, the, the glowing yellow, and then the darker areas are going to be our sort of ashen surface. So um, if your pattern looks something like that and you're happy with the way that my reference looks, then um, you can move on from here and we'll keep um, making some additions to our hypershade. So once you're happy with the pattern, we're going to create a Pixar ramp. Um, and I've already done a tutorial on Pixar ramps, so um, make sure you check that out before you get into, if you want to know more about ramps, um, they're pretty straightforward, but uh, there's a couple of little tricks in that tutorial that you might not be aware of. So essentially this is going to describe the sort of four different colors of our lava, uh, which is going to be black, red, orange, and, um, and yellow. So black is going to be on the left and then the second color, which is color one, is going to be red. And the next color is going to be orange. And the final color is going to be yellow. So we're going to use our fractal now, um, running the, uh, the result F into the spline map. And essentially what the result F is, is um, sort of values between zero and one, which is your, your, the, whether or not it's white, which is a value of uh, one or black, which is a value of zero or anywhere in between those two values. So essentially what that means is that when it's a value of zero, it's gonna be this um, black part here on the ramp. And when it's a value of one, it's gonna be this yellow part here. So it makes it a little bit easier to control now the color of our ramp, as you can see. So we've got now these yellow parts, which are um, going to be the glowing parts and then the black parts here that are going to be the ashen cooled down sort of um, less melted lava. 
Now in um, my example I used a bump map um, and a displacement map so you can use one or the other or both depending on what your shot is. If it's a far away shot, it's a distant shot, long shot, um, probably just a bump map was going to be fine. So you want to run your fractal uh, result F into your input bump and then if you select that node and hit 3 to expand it you want to run the result N into the bump normal. So now when you render it you should be able to see a little bit of bump mapping happening. All right, let's fire up the glow now. So if we select our main node and we hit three to expand it and we just type in glow, we'll get our glow color. We're gonna run our Pixar ramp out RGB into the glow color. And for now, um, I'm gonna change this momentarily, but I'll show you how it looks. We're gonna increase the gain of the glow channel to be 1.0 and IPR that. All right, so now, you'll see we've got a consistent glow coming from all parts of the plane. So at this point you can turn that light off. If you do turn that light off, there will be no lights in the scene technically. So it will default to the scene light that random, uh, random man puts in if there are no lights. So you can just turn the intensity down if you want. And then you can see what it looks like um, lighting the sphere just using the uh, glow from the plane. Next, we're gonna make some displacements. So we'll jump back in here. We'll type in Pixar displace. Get a displace node. We don't need the new shading group, so you can delete that. Um, and we're going to run. Uh, we're going to run the fractal into the displacement scalar. So scalar displacement is just up and down. So values of zero to one or negative one to positive one. Um, but we, with the values here uh, in the Pixar fractal, the dark areas we want them to be higher. So if we if we ran that um, RGB into our so if we ran the uh, result F into our scalar now, the dark areas would be lower, and we want them to sit on top of the lava because that's the part that cools down um, and sits on top, but is dark. So to do that, we're going to create an invert node and um, simply run the uh, result F into the RGBR channel just by expanding that out and then the result out of the RGBR into the scalar. Because this is black and white just using the one RGBR channel is not going to make any difference because there's only uh, zero to one value in all the channels anyway. And then we're going to run our out color of our displace node into our displacement shader for the um, Pixar Lava shading group. So now if we IPR that you can see that we're getting this displacement and the areas that are lightest are lowest and the areas that are darkest are sitting on top, which is what we want. Now, we also want to use our inverted fractal for our um, specular channel. Um, the reason that that is, is because we want our rock, um, our cooled down rock area to be slightly specular. Um, and I'll show you here. You can see the specularity there. It helps it stick out um, above the rest of the areas, which are essentially diffused by their glowing. So it's sort of hard to tell. So, what we're going to do is select our main node and we'll just clear that and we'll type in spec and we'll run the, um, you can run the RGB just straight into the specular uh, face color and if we render that you'll see that we're getting a bit of specularity happening um, across the board but if I let that render up for a second you can see that it's now starting to make that pop a little bit more than if there was no specularity on it. Um, specularity is usually quite good at um, helping define edges. Um, so just in the attribute editor here now you can also just go ahead and increase the roughness. I think I had mine set to 0.63. Um, so we don't want it shiny but we do want it to be slightly reflective. Yeah find, find a value that you're happy with. I might go a little bit lower 0.48 on this one. And you will obviously get some specularity in these other areas. Okay, so I'm going to select our um, node again here, our Pixel Lava node, and we're almost done. Um, I'm just going to show you one other thing that you can do here, though. Uh, essentially, it looks pretty good. It's probably just a matter of fiddling around with your Pixar Fractal to find uh, the pattern that you want. Um, but I am going to show you just one more thing that you can do to get a little bit extra control over the glow gain. And this way we are going to be able to control, uh, we're going to have the glow coming primarily from the areas that are lightest uh, in the fractal, which are going to be those yellow areas on the, in, in practice. Um, and then the darker areas aren't going to be emitting at light, which is sort of what we want. Uh, we could just run our result F straight into our glow gain, but we're going to limit ourselves with the amount of control we have if we do that. So what I'm going to do here uh, is use a Pixar threshold node. So if I just hit tab to Pixar thresh 
holds and we'll get a threshold. Uh, then you can run your result F into your input RGBR and then you're out of your RGBR into your glow gain. And how this is going to work is you can see that uh, the everything's gone dark and it's because the the um, the amount of light they were allowing to be let out is um, limited. So what I'm going to do here is change the um, channel to be average um, and then just reduce the threshold down to say like 0.1 and you can see that's really made a difference to the dark areas if you compare it to the previous renders the dark areas are much darker now um, and that contrast is really what we're looking for here. And then the transmission width, uh, the transition width, the higher you make that, essentially the more it will sort of diff uh, normalize the brightness between the light and the dark. So if you want more contrast, you basically want to pull this down towards sort of zero um, or wherever about you want it. Uh, and finally, you can change the transmission uh, transition profile. If we change the transition profile to be like a Gaussian, it would just be a nice soft transition between the light and the dark. And then, you know, you could make it much darker if you wanted or much lighter if you wanted. Um, just find an area that suits you. And I'm just gonna pull in a little bit more brightness. So I got something like that. And now if we zoom in on these dark areas, you'll see that as it renders up, the specularity is starting to really make that pop and look like um, sort of ashy. Uh, rock surface as it's emerging and cooling down from the molten lava and yeah that that's pretty much all there is to it if I, I'm sure I haven't forgotten anything here so now feel free to create your own procedural lava and apply it to any surface you want it doesn't have to be a plan you could apply it to this um, sphere if you wanted to why don't we do that and see how it looks you know you can, you can get some fun effect you probably want to reduce the displacement on that but you know um, if you were trying to create a uh, molten lava planet or a sun or something like that. Maybe you're working on Star Wars and you're making Mustafar or something like that. Um, make sure you credit me in the at the end of the movie so I know that you've used my technique, Lucas. No, I'm kidding. Um, but um, yeah, you can do a lot of cool stuff with this, obviously, and then you can use this technique for other things other than just lava. Uh, but I'll leave that up to you to figure out. Um, but that's pretty much all there is to this tutorial though. So hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you learned a little bit about a couple of different nodes that I don't think I've used before in tutorials. Uh, if you did like it, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do a couple of these tutorials every week for software like Renderman and, and other CG products as well. If you want to stay up to date uh, even further, check out the Facebook page, link in the description. That's it for now though, thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.